You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, the anime podcast where we talk about the historical animation known as Bleach. This is based on real events? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Bob Video Games. As it must be as usual, Dan Video Games. I never knew how important Karakura Town was until now. Dr. Agro. I want to go back. <laughs> and Chris Wolfhart. I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to go back. Because this time we covered up the 205 to 209. And in that, we go back in time. <laughs> this is like one of those fun trips to the past, like some hokey 80s or 90s film where we get in a fun adventure machine to go back in time. This is more like you're all grounded, so we're going back <laughs> in time. Let me tell you a story. Oh, oh no. <laughs> You know, your Uncle Joker used to not be so medicated or extra medicated. It's unclear. <laughs> oh, man. I did, I'm really glad no one just called the Joker. <laughs> they they should have just put Kuratsuchi in the uh, Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> it looks better than the one they went with. Yeah, no, that would be pretty incredible. No one would be ready for him. Yeah, uh, none of those were the actual people you thought they were. And also, here's a Bleach character. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> That's the sound of the studio shuddering. <laughs> we need we need more Mayuri characters in general. <laughs> like, we need more. I'm an actual mad scientist, but I'm the main character. <laughs> Somehow, through the forces that be, I've been made to be here. <laughs> the central part of the story instead of the villain. <laughs> That would have made Suicide Squad kills the Justice League a lot more interesting. Yeah. Having an idea for the plot sure would have made that a lot more interesting. <laughs> sure would have. <laughs> I would pop off where when he revealed, no, I disabled the bomb in me and put bombs in all of you without any of you knowing. <laughs> <laughs> I also built this giant tower full of <clears throat> reishi. <laughs> You uh, you want to see what happens when it busts loose? <laughs> no, we do not, and we do not appreciate the language you chose to describe that moment. <laughs> Too bad, it's happening. <laughs> but before we get into these episodes, <laughs> I need to hear about the Patreon. Chris, can you tell me about it? What's that? Well, if you'd like to support this show, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast for as little as five dollars a month you get early access to this show and pokemon go to the movies our other monthly anime review podcast indeed if you're listening to this on youtube there is another episode waiting for you on the patreon supporting us also includes various other benefits such as commentary tracks for horrible movies and uh, an entire movie called isolation 119 which you should watch i'm not going to describe because i don't do that on this show that's patreon.com slash gb podcast sign up now and get a highly inflated sense of self-worth as you're like oh i'm a supporter of these cool guys you've never heard of them <laughs> they love bleach <laughs> <laughs> not unilaterally <laughs> not all on a bleach. macro ski <laughs> on a macro scale then yes yeah of course he realized he should use both hands to swing the sword. That's incredible. <laughs> How can we not love Bleach? We've, we've produced so much content about uh, Jinkaria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and more to come. I mean, he is the main character of Bleach, after all. He's certainly the biggest brain worm in Bleach. <laughs> Oh, well, let's not talk about him. Let's talk about these episodes. <sighs> let's th I'm tired of old filler. <laughs> let's talk about new filler. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Episode 205. We're having a stupid fucking Kamari competition. Ichigo thinks it's stupid. And it's like, bro, you caused this. <laughs> They're at the stupid fucking soccer field. Kenryu's team is Rukia, Ishida, who I assume is being held hostage. And Kone in Ichigo's body. Richio's team is Ichigo, Chad, Orihime, and Inryu. Ashita says he's doing he, he's just a hater. He's like, <laughs> uh, I'm just here to make your life harder, Ichigo. It's so good. I feel like this is pretty consistent with his character going forward and backwards. <laughs> he's like, if you've not been paying attention, every moment I've not tried to kill you, we've had a common enemy. 
<laughs> I feel like he's it's downgraded to from killing, so now Ishid is just like secretly adjusting his clothing so they don't fit right. right. Like there's gonna be one of these illustrated guide to Soul Reapers where he catches Ishida doing that in his closet. He's gonna take off his left shoes. <laughs> Kenryu is jealous because Inryu is on Ruricio's side and he's the favorite because he just does whatever she wants. Uh, their team is short a member, so they have Yorichi in as a ringer. Urahara made her do it because he gets money from the Kasumiyoji. Oh, fucking whatever. <laughs> Ruki, Ru, Ru, Ruki also says, I'm doing it because I'm also a nobleton. I'm like, yes, you're the real ones that their status is based in. We produce really powerful guys. They're fake. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we never hear about them again after this episode. We'll see. <laughs> Urahara's guys, uh, Ururu, Ginta, and what is his fucking name? I have no idea. Tesse. Yeah, Tesse. there we go. Tesse are the refs. Ruki explains the rules with doodles. You keep the ball in the air. So this, this, this isn't a game you can win. So they have to add a rule that whoever drops the ball first loses. Mm -hmm. uh, then Mauricio looks like a lizard. <laughs> Correct. Nonstop. This child. This I is swear. perhaps this is perhaps the most lizard like she has ever looked, I think. I I I certainly hope I got a picture of this. Yeah, the fantastic part is they show it and I crack up hard because she does just have lizard like qualities to her face. Here's here's the lizard. Then then <laughs> later in the episode, I think they use that animation again. And I'm like, what? It was that good, huh? You had to go back for it. It's yeah. just how re regular uh, <laughs> Ruichio Ruichio. looks. I mean, what did you guys think was secretly ruling the Soul Society from behind the scenes? <laughs> Central 46? Nah. The real shadow government. Lizards. <laughs> uh, the mod souls are here. They don't do anything, but they're here, so I have to heap scorn upon the episode for that. It was like Smash Bros. Everybody's here. <laughs> Uru throws the ball into space to start the game. They, they play Kamari and everybody interferes with each other with their powers. This goes on for like five minutes. Eventually, Ikaku shows up and he replaces Kone because Kone got obliterated by Tessay because he was out of bounds or some shit. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, I think that they say they use the same stuff they're using literally in real Bleach right now to like seal off Karakura Town, but it, for the <laughs> sake of this Kamari game instead of Defy Aizen. <laughs> yeah, it's like if Goku used the Dragon Balls for a volleyball game. <laughs> I mean, he so would. <laughs> Dan, 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 there are there are less agreed that's a less egregious use of the dragon balls than many things that they have done in canon dragon ball i would like to believe given the fullness of context there might be reasons for them to wish for things worse but i don't know i didn't watch all of dragon ball bulma regularly uses them to make herself look slightly younger this is smart i don't know <laughs> ikaku's just trying to fight ichigo and nothing else Richio and Kenryu almost have a compromise, but then a cra big crab hollow shows up and washes Richio away with a flood. And the flood at first is portrayed as like this big hollow landed in the river and then due to the displacement of liquid caused a wave that swept her up. But then as soon as you know, the 85 strong people currently present murder the hollow. The flood fades away, implying it was actually part of the hollow's powers. Well, if I remember correctly, the hollow lands. Then it does the, the most zoomed in shot you can imagine on it, lifting its right claw up and then down. And then it cuts to a wave happening. Then the wave subsides and then they just quickly chop up the hollow. Is that right? Yeah, it, uh, Kenryu jumps in to save her, and Inryu makes a big <laughs> rock hand to catch them, and and that was ent entirely unnecessary because ten seconds after that, it's it's dead. Yeah. Look, at, at this point in the episode, we have already just completely thrown aside any pretense that we are bound by space or distance or relative position. <laughs> it's true. They just yeah. are in front of new backgrounds when it's time to do the next scene. I was cracking up so hard. I was making jokes of the judge's stand would be in the middle of the city at random. <laughs> this is like if you animated like a tabletop combat encounter in a game that doesn't have a map. Mm-hmm. 
everybody's position is real fluid. Ruricio's husband, question mark, shows up and shows her and Kenryu that the people sent letters supporting her stupid fucking Kamari tournament idea. This this resolves the problem and they leave. I hope we never see any of them ever again. God, this was the stupidest fucking plot contrivance I've ever had to endure. They cut to the wide shot. The door actually is on the side of a space shuttle and it takes <laughs> off into orbit. We're like, oh, thank God. They were arguing about whether or not to have this Kamari tournament longer than it would have taken to have a Kamari tournament. Their argument, in fact, included a Kamari tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, not golden. Not golden. Ichigo still can't read the store name from last time. Ikaku <laughs> shows up and also can't read. Ichigo is roughly as literate as a man raised in a mud cave. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 206. In, instead of a recap, it's an explanation that we're going into a flashback to explain the visors. 110 years in the past. Woo. Woodaloo, 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 woodaloo. No, don't. The pendulum swings. <laughs> we have to train to get ready for the Saiyans. <laughs> <laughs> Aizen is a lieutenant. He's Shinji's lieutenant. Shinji is a captain. Some sort of ceremony is happening and everybody has to get ready so he's there to like drag him there. Shinji is listening to jazz from the human world with, and the timeline for that really doesn't fucking work out unless Shinji was like, yeah, I was hanging out in New Orleans. <laughs> I, I also got this thing that isn't sold to normal people yet called a record player. Look, Shinji's really on top of this. Wait, what if, what if modern timeline bleach takes place later than we assume? I don't think that's true. And I'm not willing to give Kubo the benefit of the doubt. They they did use flip phones longer than they should have in Japan. Maybe it was another <laughs> 10 years further out than we thought. <laughs> uh, they have to go to Squad 1. Shinji hates seeing Squad 1 because they're so serious and they make him nervous. They open the big door and Hiyori comes out and kicks him and they squabble a little bit. Love, who is also a captain, but, but not her captain, hits her and tells her to apologize. Uh... She's only a lieutenant, and then they, then they, then Hiori and Shinji fight some more. So I was talking about it with Bob uh, a little bit. Has it been a whole year since we've seen these guys, and this is how we get to see them again? <laughs> because Something the last like time we saw them was pre-filler, right? So it goes mm. eyes and stuff that didn't include them. Filler conclusion of eyes and fights with cool let me people. Let me see. <laughs> it's, it's been so long. I wanted to cry. I was like, <laughs> "You guys are so cool. How come I can only see you here?" Yeah, I don't think that it's been a full year for us, but for maybe for the original broadcast. It was more. It was more than a full year for the original broadcast. Okay. Yeah. But it's because we did the movie. Because oh, we did two movies. Right. I think. Okay. I think we might, it might have actually been, a, it's been probably a year. Yeah, because yeah, when when we do the five episodes a month, we're tracking roughly on, you know, for how live broadcast would be, but us yeah, slightly a, faster. a month to watch a whole movie. Is, but, but we yeah. also did the filler, the filler much faster. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, right. So I guess it comes out about net neutral, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it's been too long. Now I have to check. Now I'm actually curious. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I love the Visards. Frankly, I haven't had an opportunity to talk about how cool they are and how much I enjoy them as characters and, and the notion of them. And they just, I've spent most of the ice and arc waiting for them to do anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I believe the last time we would have seen them was episode 141. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. even with the two wow. movies, even with us doing the filler faster, it's been it's been at least a year. <sighs> wow, Jesus! <sighs> we learned that Kenpachi isn't coming to this meeting. It, it, I don't think it's the same Kenpachi. Yeah, I don't. I, probably not. Because the way because the way they describe him is different, and they say the the captain of Squad Eleven is always called Kenpachi. Right. It's unclear whether becoming a Kenpachi means like they, they're adopted by a powerful family or Kenpachi is like a universal ideal and that person morphs into Kenpachi. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just take the family name when they become captain. I don't think it's anything that weird. I assume it's like when you kill them, you, you're the new Kenpachi. When you kill Kenpachi, you become Kenpachi. Yeah, I think some of the older stuff we watched, right. they did come out and say that. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they said when we first met Kipachi. He's like, yeah, I killed my way up the corporate ladder. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Chioraku shows up. Lisa is his lieutenant. He sure has a fucking type, huh? <laughs> Rose is also a captain. They mention a character, Hikifune, who is no longer a captain because they started a new position. Ukitake, Unohana, Yamamoto, and Kyoraku are the only people who have been captains for over 100 years. Unohana is behind everybody and is a little bit creepy. They say the former captain of Squad 12, which is Hikifune, was promoted, and Aizen is like, to fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is, the Royal Guard. <gasps> then Yoruichi, who is a captain, and Byaki is, I guess, grandfather, show up. Boy, nothing has sure happened yet. <laughs> We need to establish where it's, everyone is in the timeline. Yeah, it's just a whole flashback filler arc that is the thing you would cut to in Bleach to stall for time. Look, Hiori's been on screen. This was in the manga. This is all real. Th this is all real and is even basically the same place it was. Yeah, I actually was really surprised when Bob told me that this is in the manga because it carries itself and introduces itself the same way the last Jackknife fillers arc did. Yeah, that's what pisses me off, because they were copying the manga. <laughs> we, we had all these little things that the Bount arc just ripped off from the manga, but this is exactly, it's like so similar. It's, it made me insanely angry. Only, you know, this has characters anyone would care about instead of Kira being the like top runner in that filler arc. One moment, Kira. <laughs> His sword makes you fat. <laughs> oh my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that loser. <laughs> we, we cut to Yoruichi training with Urahara. They spar a bit and talk about basically nothing. Urahara is her third seat, and she recommended him for his, to be the new captain of Squad 12. Yoruichi goes and meets Soifan, who is seethingly angry that Yoruichi has been spending any time with a man. We get a flashback where she visits Urahara's... Soifan visits Urahara's room, and it's messy, and he's sleeping midday, so she hates him forever. Yoruichi basically teases her for being a femme cell. Then Soifan goes to stalk Urahara so she can prove he's ontologically evil or whatever. She finds him doing a bunch of different things that aren't work and writes like a book report about it. And then delivered, tries to deliver it, but Urahara is always already there talking to, Soi, uh, talking to Yoruichi when he, she comes to deliver it. Yoruichi bullies her by claiming she's stalking Urahara because she's in love with him and she throws a fit. She shows her book report on Urahara and just gets bullied more. Then a report comes in and Urahara has to go do something. But he better do it fast because the, the captain's exam is soon. And the stuff <laughs> he was doing was looking for deserters. And then he goes in and beats all of them up. Uh, and then he goes and takes the captain's exam and succeeds off camera. Yeah, and the him owning those dudes in the shed is also like off camera camera yeah it's entirely you, off camera you see a lot of energy pour out of the house and then they're like oh can say the knife guy is also a captain uh, and then they then they do the opening of the shusuke amagai uh arc and i got it angry <laughs> <laughs> illustrated guide to soul reapers not golden not rukia golden. is drawing a diary about what ichigo does to send back to soul society starting next episode instead of the illustrated guide to soul reapers will be the substitute soul reaper work journal Episode 207, Urahara meets all the other captains. Uh, Kirio Hikifune was promoted to the Royal Guard, and Urahara is the new captain. Bleach filler. Painful. Re realizing the bleach filler was copying what was currently happening in the manga when they started the filler. Excruciating. <laughs> it's like, okay, relive this trauma, but this time you have to pay attention because it's real. Urahara meets Squad 12. It's exactly the fucking same. It's exactly the fucking same. Yeah, I was noticing even the, the random Soul Reapers they draw in his squad look, look a, yeah, uh -huh. they look just like the ones they drew in Squad 3 or whatever. Man, those guys never got promoted over 110 no, years. No, they did. They, they moved squads, though. <laughs> <laughs> they trade them around. <laughs> yes, they're that useless. I mean, they, uh, they might have gotten promoted. We don't fucking understand the... Uh, the structure exactly of these squads. Yeah, anything under a lieutenant is just kind of like, it's just some 
ordinary men. Hey, hey, under a third seat. We have the top oh, three. Everyone you. else is just meaningless. You're right. How could I forget third seat when third seat Kabune is right exactly. there for me to remember oh. it by? This flashback also shows that it goes down to fifth seat and also mentions third seats a couple times. So even that came from this. God, I, mm, I hate the seeing Urahara being treated the same way as they even look alike. Yeah, and it's like, but Uruhar is actually, we know what he is, and he's neat, and oh my god. How can I possibly care about that filler arc, man? Yeah, I mean, Uruhar is uh, incredibly likable, he's very powerful, and his motivations are complex. Uh-huh. None of those <laughs> describe Shusuke Amakai. No. Hiori is his lieutenant. Hiori doesn't approve and is like, you came from the Stealth Force, so all you do is murder people, and that's a pretty fucking astute observation <laughs> Hiori goes on a rant and Urahara then says it, 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 and like I see the specter of Shusuke Amagai over him as he <laughs> says this he's like I don't care if you bad mouth the stealth force because I'm not in the stealth force anymore I only care if someone bad mouths my squad and then she kicks him and runs off he's apparently extremely hard so she, he, she hurt her foot <laughs> <laughs> just, just really excited to be working with squad 12 you guys <laughs> maybe not too excited? <laughs> she should get some steel toe shoes. Maybe that'll work out for her. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't think they have those in Soul Society. I think everybody has to wear Geta. But they have jazz. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shinji does because he's strange. <laughs> <laughs> she runs off to mope and finds a giant wagon train full of Urahara's stuff. She almost kicks him again, but then doesn't because she's like, oh, that fucking hurt. They bicker a little bit. She knocks a bunch of furniture off the wagon onto herself and runs off. Urhar goes to check on her with a first aid kit and she kicks him and runs off again. The next day, Urhar gives a little speech about how he tried thinking of what Squad 12 should stand for, but he couldn't. He couldn't think of anything. Then Hiori kicks him and runs off again and Shinji finds her and they bicker some more. Some Squad 12 guys are kind of slacking off. Urhar is kind of slacking off with them. They get nervous and he tells them to relax. He already shows up and chews them out and they get to let's spar to see who's right. And she drop kicks him in the face and runs off. Then they reveal her actually dodged. Let her see him dodge and then moved back to get hit, which is overly complicated. <laughs> Complex even. That evening, Shinji shows up and talks to a disrot Urahar and he gives the advice of understand your subordinates feelings, but act like you don't, which is like the self-image of every shitty father. <laughs> <laughs> so then he leaves and pulls away a veil to reveal that Aizen was hiding and watching. And Aizen asks how long he knew he was there. And Shinji says, since you were in your mother's womb, which is a pretty <laughs> raw line to use on a guy who we already know finessed him back to front. <laughs> <laughs> like Shinji banished Aizen captain for 100 years. <laughs> Hiori comes in the next day and Urahara has remodeled the captain's room. She gets mad and they have a touching moment where he tries to understand her. Then he says they're going to go to the maggot's nest, whatever that is. Substitute Soul Reaper work journal. Rukia explains the combat badge and the soul candy. Kone takes over Ichigo's body while he fights a hollow. And when Ichigo comes back, Kone has harassed every single girl in class and the teacher is smacking him with a book. Man, do you, do you think that like Ichigo's classmates were like, man, he was normal until like last year when he became schizophrenic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see more of that. Like every every three or four days, he just gets real strange. They're like, <laughs> oh man, puberty's real strange. Different people react different ways. Some become outright schizophrenic. <laughs> I feel like he he turns into a Ranma character. Yeah, <laughs> schizophrenic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> episode 208 they're going to the maggot's nest the stealth force is technically separate from the rest of the gote 13 the head of the stealth force is the shihoan family that's yoruichi's family when they become the captain of a squad that squad becomes closely tied to the stealth force during their captain's reign uh then or is like i was the head of guantanamo yeah <laughs> it's, just, it's like right we don't just kill people sometimes we just throw them in a hole forever yeah, and Hiori's like, uh, you're a scumbag. <laughs> yeah. His job was to capture and detain soul reapers that needed to be detained for whatever reason. Yeah, I assume they have, like, the uh, 
God, what's that Tom Cruise movie where he arrests people before they do Minority anything? Minority Report. Yes. Yeah, they, the, the prison for them is the maggot's nest. It's a nice prison because he just locks them in a big hole underground. This, if, if you try to quit or suck too much as a Soul Reaper, this is where you go because it's bad for the reputation of the 13 court guard squads. If any, If anybody who joins them is ever proven to be incompetent or of poor character so if, if that happens they have to just they just like you up forever i guess that you know they must have closed this place <laughs> down otherwise Renji would be down here oh no <laughs> oh come on he tries so hard <laughs> central 46 decided on this it's probably good eyes and killed all those guys honestly yeah this is your weekly reminder that soul society are not the good guys in this show mm-hmm. someone he or he re- knows recognizes her and begs her for help then another guy attacks, and Urahara stops him with one hand and reveals no weapons are allowed inside the me- the prison, which seems strange. Like, can can you like grab somebody else's Zanpakuto? Does that work? I guess. Please, please don't ask how Zanpakuto work. Yeah, I know. We are too deep in this. We might right? get a whole movie about it again. <laughs> Uh, but because of that, the warden has to be able to defeat everybody unarmed. Then he beats up a bunch of guys. Everybody in this jail is kind of ugly, so it comes off like, here's where we put you if you're too ugly to even be an NPC in a background <laughs> shot. Right. We, we, we have certain uh, standards about the purity of our blood. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Go like, on. Like, like let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, he, Keisuke rinses like the biggest guy in there. And then one idiot looks to the other and goes, now's our chance for some reason. <laughs> right? Well, he's surely winded now that he effortlessly <laughs> eviscerated a guy four times your size. Like, <laughs> in the, in, when you're watching a Nolan Batman film, you don't see the goon just look at the other goon and go, now I know he beat the shit out of him effortlessly, but now's the time. <laughs> you you entertain that maybe the adrenaline or the desperation <laughs> is what motivated them to talk, to attack then, not, uh, I've thought about this, <laughs> and now's the optimal time. <laughs> the, then the guy he already knows tries to take her hostage and she beats him up. They're here to see the one guy who they keep in a cell, <laughs> Mayuri. <laughs> so of course, they're here to hire the completely evil guy. <laughs> Mayuri hates Urahara because he can't understand what he's uh, what he's thinking and calls him a very unpleasant fellow. Urahara wants him to be the third seat in the new research division. And he grins. And then we cut to teenage Byakuya training. His grandfather, the Captain Kuchiki from earlier scenes, shows up and Byakuya is so excited to speak with him. This is before fascism crushed his soul. (laughs) (laughs) He also brought Yoruichi with him. Byakuya is not happy about this one. She teases him and shoves her boobs in his face a little bit and steals his hair tie and runs off. And then she chases after her. Broken use flash step and is like 12. Now, Now I'm thinking they're both like big noble clans. So, is, like, was Byakuya's grandfather trying to do, like, a Bene Gesserit thing? (laughs) (laughs) Like, he's like, well, we gotta, we gotta keep, we gotta fuse the two noble houses and and strengthen the bloodline. (laughs) We must create the ultimate flash step. Then we cut to Shiba, Kai and Shiba, and Ukitake having tea. Shiba doesn't want to be Ukitake's lieutenant. He doesn't think he deserves it. Then they discuss a prodigy who came out of the academy in one year and is imp- as impressive as Biaki, and he's going to get an officer's seat as soon as he graduates. And while they were talking about this, I thought it was Hitsugaya. Yeah, that would make sense. I, I feel like that'd be too early. Mm. Yeah, it's too early. But it's actually Gein. Eisen recruited him and had him kill the third seat of Shinji's squad. <sighs> then we jump forward nine years to people dying. Substitute Soul Reaper work journal. Golden? Rukia explains... No. No, there's no golden. (laughs) Rukia explains Ichigo's relationship with the Afro Soul Reaper. Nobody can remember his name. Episode 209. Some guys are dying. They all explode into Reishi. Some shadows are watching and they use like an umbrella to not get soaked in the gum. Reishi. Reishi. Sure. Do you think that was a part of the deal, by the way, for Kurutsuchi? He's like, become my third in command. I promise you a building full of reishi. <laughs> Shinji and Aizen are out walking around. They meet Urahara, Hiyori, and Mayuri. Mayuri hates Shinji because Shinji is overly familiar and calls him by his first name. Hiyori kicks Shinji for greeting everybody but her, and then they fight for a little while as Aizen talks to Urahara. 
Aizen says there are mysterious deaths happening in the Rukon district, or rather disappearances, because they find their clothes, and if you die in Soul Society, your clothes vanish. Is that what's up? That's what they, they said. That's, ex that's what they said. Okay, that's and they the showed weirdest... a fucking diagram of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's the weirdest let's decipher the meaning of this death via the clothes thing since Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> What? Then Eisen says it's like they can't maintain their human form. Squad Nine is investigating. That's Kensei's squad. Um, Mashiro, the girl who looks like Mei Li from King of Fighters, is his <laughs> lieutenant. She's so annoying that Kensei almost starts beating her ass, and like his the other four guys with him have to like hold him back. A hollow is there and has cornered some kids. One of them looks more attractive than the others, you know, for a child, uh, mm -hmm. and has and has dark hair. So he's obviously the younger version of another character. What ever gave you that idea? He distracts the hollow so the others can escape and is saved by Kensei and his guys. He cries after and Kensei can't deal with it. Then Mashiro comes running and said she found the uniforms of the 10 inv advanced investigators who were sent out in the bushes. Kensei is shocked. He gives orders to all his guys who are named different things in Japanese versus English, and I don't know why. Yeah, I assume that they're the first name, last name thing, but wh where in Bleach would we have heard both their names? <laughs> yeah. One has an afro and a mask and is obviously Tosin. What? No way. Huh? Then we see that Kensei has a 69 tattoo on his chest, so this is very obviously baby <laughs> Hisagi. When are we getting the flashback to explain the 69 on that guy's chest? Because <laughs> obviously this is the one to explain the one on his cheek. I still wish the, the hollow just hit him and gave him a 69 shaped scar. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really funny. The hollow's tug is like a, a tattoo needle. <laughs> yes. Okay, hold very still. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> we cut to the research division. Mayuri is ordering Hiori around and she hates it. She throws a fit and he's just like, you're cringe. <laughs> She's mad somebody she outranks is bossing her around. And then Mayuri says, well, technically, I'm the second in command of the Research Institute. So while you're here, you're my subordinate. It's a lot like the territories in that part of Yu Yu Hakusho. Did you watch Yu Yu? <laughs> <laughs> she throws another fit. Urahara shows up with a corpse on his back and whines that he was trying to sleep. He was designing a new gi guy, so maybe if somebody can't hold their human form together, like whatever is happening makes them unstable, they might be able to be transferred into this gi guy instead. Foreshadowing! Huh? What? <laughs> uh, Kensei shows up and reports. Urahara tells Hiori to go. And, and she gets mad and says, you should send somebody like him and points backwards. And it's baby Akon. It is little tiny baby Akon. And then baby Akon says, you complain about everything. Why don't you just quit? You hate it so much. Fact. And, and then she tries to machine gun kick him and he dodges them all, which is very funny and brings Mayuri a beaker. And he's like, oh, thank you. A pair, according to Kubo, Akon is the only person Mayuri treats like a human being because he is as equally into science as Mayuri. Weird. Aww. Obviously, she can't quit. That just means going in the hole. <laughs> I mean, I imagine you could transfer to a different squad. Maybe. Rukia did it. That's true. Hiori again throws a fit. Urhar is then like, I'm having you do it because I trust you. And then and basically guilts her into doing it. Yeah, those random guys in that one squad did it in time for that other filler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had some time. 110 years yeah. about. Who knows how long the paperwork takes, but <laughs> it's possible. Kinsei has erected a command post and his guys are outside gardening, guarding it. The guy that went to see Urahara shows up and takes his post on watch. Inside the tent, Kinsei is watching Mashiro sleep and says she's even annoying while she's sleeping, but then they hear fighting and rush outside. All three of his guys have been defeated. I think it's important to talk about the fact she was having lewd dreams about him in her sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of a power move. <laughs> Kensei prepares for battle, but somebody defeats the guy right next to him somehow. Then he gets trapped in Tosin's Bonkai and stabbed from behind. <gasps> Who did this? I, uh, it, <laughs> it could be anyone. But it's not Tosin, right? Where's Byakuya during this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 
Yeah, he, he, he cut off all their senses and stabbed them. There, there, multiple people can do that, right? <laughs> he was yeah. probably Kenpachi. <laughs> probably. Holy shit. That's what happens when he uses his foot instead of his hands. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Substitute Soul Reaper work journal. Rukia, Ichigo, and Renji are looking for Rangiku. She's shopping. Rukia explains that the Substitute has to find Soul Reapers who left their phone at home. I would like to note that this is just a movie. Yeah, this is something that happened in a movie, yeah. Yeah. I, the, Did are, it? are they going to keep doing that? They're just going to chop out the tiny, delightful moments from movies and things and just stick them here well, and be well, like, this is a these, thing that happens all the time. It was probably this first, because a lot of these end-of-episode things are just the little doodles he does so what you're telling for the volume me, releases. So what you're telling me is at, we're basically at the level of recycling water where we're drinking the sweat from the piss that we drank. <laughs> How many times? How many times did, will this nutrient <laughs> pass through my system? Yeah, who, who's the guy? Who, who's who's the guy? Uh, Bear Grills, right? Mm. Yeah, we're basically him right now. It's like uh, we're in filler. Better drink our own piss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next filler arc. That's just about Rangiku shopping. <laughs> All right, That'd be better than a lot of the filler we've it seen. Would. Right. Man, the next filler is no way it's that good, honestly. <laughs> but that's all the episodes. That means these are fun segments. Ooh. Segments like best dressed award. Dr. Edgar, who is the best dressed? Oh man, there was uh there were there were a lot of change ups in outfits for a lot of returning characters, but at the end of the day, I've got to give it to to this absolutely bizarre. Dr. Seuss cyber goth clown motherfucker rolling around with Kensei? Yeah, Tosin. Mm. <laughs> Could be anyone. <laughs> Isn't sure. he dead at the end of that episode? No, he fell. He just fell down. Oh, okay. Which is a pretty easy thing to fake. He was clearly doing that. Oh, no, I died. I'm definitely not the guy who did this. No, yeah, I feel like having Tosin show up in a mask and then pretend to be dead would just be a lot of trouble to go through for something you didn't need to fake at all. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. But still, like, like the immaculate topiary sculpt mixed with the poofy shouldered sleeves that end in onesie gloves. It's, it's a whole thing. Yeah, their weird, their weird boncho coats are strange. I don't think we see anybody wearing shit like that again. Yeah, I guess it's just part of his squad does that, which is very strange since it's close. It's close to the Captain Hiori. Right? I, I think he just does it to humiliate them because he has no sleeves at all because that is the mark of a true man. Well, that's because he's a Chad. <laughs> all right, Chris, who do you think was the best dressed? I'm going to go with Captain Shinji. I think it's really funny he has really long, majestic hair as a captain. <laughs> it is unbelievably <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's great. Real lesbian icon. <sighs> Doesn't remind me of the Shoshomaru look. <laughs> I guess I'm up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with Smashiro. I think her weird little goggles on her head and red scarf worked really well. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good. Really good design here. No, no change there. <laughs> Dan, wh who do you pick? Okay. So uh, I, I realized we, we've never even like tested this before. This uh -huh. may be the first time this has ever been brought in. So for best dress, I want to bring in them trying to remember Kuruma Dani's name. And they misremembered him as a hybrid of the word for his name and a car. So he was a car for a frame there. I'm bringing in that because, you know, if he could do that, that would be really helpful. And I thought it was, uh, it hit me like a truck. I would totally watch that filler arc where Soul Reaper turns into a car, goes around Karakura town. Time to Nabe leave. That has to be really inconvenient because no one can see the car, right? <laughs> But to be clear, my uh, my secondary pick, in case you threw that out, was Mashiro. <laughs> <laughs> no, a turning it into a car is a perfectly acceptable form of dressing, I guess. It's very stylish. Yeah. With that done, we can move on to the, the segment where Dan tells us how excited he is to continue watching Bleach. Dan, what are you feeling? Ah! On like a 1 to 10 scale, though? <laughs> what? <laughs> Really? I just... I... 
There are neat little details about the character's past in here, but I cannot get over how much it reflects the Shusuke Amagai arc in so many yeah, different ways. Yeah, but that's, that's so, it's so fucked up they did this. Like, if I was Kubo, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, hey, can you wait till I do it? <laughs> can you put my thing in first before your terrible regurgitated version? Right. It also came at a terrible time. I feel like this would be a lot easier to swallow if we didn't have two completely unnecessary filler episodes before it. I feel like even after this, that would be a better place for it. Yeah. Because then it would be like, oh, well, now it's taking a little bit longer to get back to the, the main thing. Instead of having to deal with two staircases in a row <laughs> that you're falling yeah. down. Yeah, that, that would be, it'd be really great to not fall down two flights of stairs all at once. Uh, yeah, I... I you know what? It will conclude in the next set, so it has to be higher than one. There's more hope than that. I'm going to give it a three. All right. Moving up. <laughs> it, do it does actually. This does actually conclude in the next five, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. You. There are, I believe, three more episodes of this past arc. Okay. Okay. All right. Chris, did you bring any insane trivia? Okay, we know that Soul Society has four noble families. One are the Shihuans who run the Stealth Force. Uh, another are the uh, Kuchikis who are the historians of Soul Society. Kubo had to scrap these plans, but his plan was for one to be the, the healing family and one to be the keto-focused family. Is this true or false, Dan? False. Bob. This does seem a little too openly thought out, so I'm going to say false. Agro. I mean, not not that thought out. I'm going to go with true. Uh, it's false. In fact, we have never been given anything about the other two. <laughs> <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> it's going to show up and burn the witch. I know it. <laughs> I, th I, think th I think they announced like, oh, uh, yeah, we're doing some kind of bleach announcement soon. So it might just be we're making bleach too. I mean, <laughs> it, that one shot kind of implies such. Um, hey, quick question. Does anyone know if any of the video games have long hair, Shinji? <laughs> I feel like that's pretty likely. Okay, cool, great. It's just, it's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I keep looking at this picture you posted a minute. I, I desperately now want like an animation of him wearing Finn from Adventure Time's weird bear hat and then pulling it off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> also, am I, am I correct in that Shinji's Roger Craig Smith? Yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah, so it's just Sonic the fucking Hedgehog comes back into Bleach <laughs> after over a year missing. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't even notice until Dan mentions this, Now I can't unhear the Sonic the Hedgehog. It's rough. <laughs> oh, you can play as long hair Shinji in Bleach Brave Souls. Oh, okay, cool. Bleach Month's going to be so good when Bleach ends. Uh-huh. Too bad we just talked about Bleach not ending. Yeah, maybe never ending. <laughs> 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 It'll be fine. It'll all be fine. <laughs> uh, man, Chainsaw Man anime, we respect your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Preventing us from keeping two anime podcasts running for the rest of time, only one. <laughs> all right, now we can actually rate these episodes using our patented tightness scale 0 to 25. Chris, how tight were these? <sighs> 14. <laughs> Like I did like stuff in them, but it just it just being like, oh, the the Shusuke Amagai arc was just doing this. It's like it really drags it down a lot. <laughs> Dan, uh, so I'm kind of down there with Chris, but I cannot express the level of sucker punched I felt. I had heard rumblings of we will just get an arc of the anime that's about Soul Society's past. I didn't expect it when it happened. I didn't expect it to not even transition cleanly into that. I didn't <laughs> expect it to be regurgitated Shusuke Amakai shit. <laughs> there are some delightful things here to enjoy, but given that I was reeling from that for the first couple episodes at least of this set, and the first episode is so terrible. Like, we did not stress enough how bad it is where they will just be like, I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, Ichigo chased that ball to a, it, inside the city. He's there in the next frame. Like, it was so tantric in how they would just draw a new background and the Bleach character trying to hit the ball. Yeah, I assume that that whole episode was made on, like, a shoestring budget, just with whatever backgrounds were sitting around. Yeah, it was, it was dire. I'm gonna have to give these a 10. 
there's something to enjoy once I can get rid of the feeling of drowning and breathing <laughs> again after the sucker punch that was the beginning of this set. I'm going to have to sit in around where Chris is, where I, I did actually enjoy a lot of this backstory building stuff, but it is too slow. It takes too long to get into the actual meat of what makes the characters interesting. And that, that landed around a 14 as well. And Dr. Riker, you get to lead us off. In a stark inverse uh, of last time, oh man, the god damn it, the, the second half of the Riccio story was just so abysmal. But the rest of this was, I, I loved it. I love doing, uh, uh, you know, all these years ago backstory fill ins seeing characters in old circumstances. It is the juice that I love. Hiori was on screen just all the time. It was pretty <laughs> great. I loved when, like, they took her to the prison and she's like, this is fucked up. You can't just keep people down here who haven't committed crimes. And then they do a fight. And she's like, what the fuck? You can't let these people out. They're all dangerous and they deserve to be here. <laughs> I absolutely adore focusing on Soul Society and and the thirteen squads just eating each other. Uh, so I'm going to give this like a sixteen. Yeah, how the heck does this society survive even the hundred years it does in this in the universe? The rule through might. They have an absolute monopoly on violence. <laughs> I forgot to mention it when they go into the prison to be like, you need to join our team. And uh, th how much that gave me Western AAA suspense thriller energy. <laughs> like this is uh, Kubo's like, oh man, you know what's cool? These 90s action films. The only man who knows the code to deactivate the bomb is the super cool badass mega scientist. Right. It's got a this snake Pliskin energy to it, yeah. It's, it's like, like we got the worst man to do the best job. It's like if Hannibal Lecter had a past history of being a Nazi scientist. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way, goddammit. You have to go down there and talk to him. Yeah, wh why would Buffalo Bill's case be best solved with the former Nazi scientist? Just trust me here. <laughs> Just trust me. Yeah, even if this set of episodes was a little little slow, at least it has great moments like that. Yes. <laughs> You're just being like, no, really, I'm fine in here. It's great. <laughs> I hate the outside now. I hate it so much. <laughs> it's probably best if I just don't talk to anyone. <laughs> just, and like, I, he's literally, I think, just doing it to be petty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's like don't don't you want to come outside and work for the good of the soul society fuck you KSK. i hate you so much <laughs> <laughs> all right and that's it we, we're free until next month hopefully you don't have to do two bleach episodes then <laughs> no we'll have to do three then <gasps> welcome to our new series guzzling bleach we cover 20 <laughs> episodes at a time we release no. episodes weekly <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I was heavily drinking as usual this time, but since it's my turn to recap, oh, this is going to be a ride. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before you down that jug of bleach, how about you head on over to patreon.com slash gbpodcast. You can get the next episode of Chugging Bleach early and help support us doing insane seven-year-long endeavors like watching all of Bleach. We also do many other shows that you can get extras for. And if you ascend to Vasto Pod Lourdes, you'll even get credit for it on Big Think Dimension, our weekly gaming podcast. If not, that's fine. We'll see you next time you're thirsty for some bleach. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme. Lee Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for a Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today. Thank you.